So this is the first day on uh, Wingman Sam. We're going to do this a little bit differently than uh, what they have in the book. In the book, the way it's set up is that you have a two-person game. It's a cooperate or cooperational game. You're not competing against each other. You're working together to kill the, uh, the boss plane at the end. Um, that's fine, uh, but it makes it hard to program because you always have to have someone else along with you to pr program the game, or at least to test the game. So that's not always the best thing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make it a one-person game rather than two. Uh, instead of uh, simulating motion through the air, we're actually going to make a really long room, really tall, and we're actually going to be flying through the room as we go. So if you started the game uh, using the book, uh, we're going to make some modifications to that. Now I've written a document. If you go out to the shared folder and look at... Uh, Wingman Sam here, there's a uh, Word document right there that talks about uh, that talks about things that we're changing from what's in the book. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going to ignore the book for most of it and just work on uh, what the game would look like with this document uh, revising what's in the book. Now in the past I usually create the book version and then try to switch it over. That takes too long, so we're just going to go with the new uh, setup to start with. I do have videos out there for some of the stuff, but I, have, I don't have them all there yet. So I'll, I'll f today is one of those things where I'll flesh that out. There's also the actual game as an executable. Uh, you can play the game just to start with, so you can kind of figure out how it works. But what does it look like? Uh, let me start the game here. Okay, so you're flying along, you have islands. We're going to add power-ups later. So now I can shoot uh, three different directions. I got planes coming at me. Standard scrolling shooter. You have all different kinds of planes. Uh, we're keeping track of damage so that the more damage you get if you run out of uh, health. See, I took some damage there. This isn't very well designed. This is just for testing. Yeah, oof. Will I survive? I don't think so. So you're flying over wa water. There's these islands going by. That's the idea. There's lots of different kind of enemy planes. There's enemy planes that shoot at you. There's enemy planes that shoot straight down. There are enemy planes that come from the sides, come from behind you up the screen that you have to watch out for. So there's lots of uh, different type of planes we have to do. So I'm gonna, we're actually just gonna start from scratch here. I'm gonna create a new game. And again, the sprites are all out in the shared folder. I suppose to start, it might be nice to get the plane flying through the room and staying on screen, that would be nice. So probably the best place to start You're just getting the basic movements of the plane done. So let's do that today. First of all, uh, we need to create a background. And this background is going to actually be a small, just a small square, go up a level. If we say load background, here's the background. It's just uh, water. We don't want to remove the background because it, well, it's his, it is the background. So. So that's what we want to do there. And this is going to tile all through the back of the room. If we create a room, our room setting is going to be kind of strange. Uh, okay, we want to change the height of the room to 4,800. Yikes. So that's a super long room. We're, we're at, you know, adding another zero to the end there. And uh, our... Our grid size, well, we'll set the grid size later. But we can not set our background now. And we're going to choose the background we just created. And now we have this nice ocean, wavy looking background. And notice how it tiles all the way through. It tiles horizontally and vertically. Okay. So here's our, uh, here's our background. 
So the next thing is to create a, sp a sprite for our plane. So we're going to create that sprite here. And we're just going to call this plane one. And uh, let's see. Let me get the right uh, resources in. Here's plane one. You move the background. And you'll note that this is the animation. There's only uh, three. three frames in the animation. Basically, it's just trying to look like the propellers are running. So you see a reflection of light off the propellers. The rest of it stays static, so it's n not that difficult in animation. If we look at the mask, we, we want the actual plane to be the collision mask. So we're going we're gonna to make it so that um, it has to actually hit the plane for it to have a collision. That asks a lot from the processor, but uh, there's not a lot going on in this game, so that should be fine. Now we create our, our game object that's here, our plane object. We'll use our new sprite. So now we have a plane that we can put into a room. Now a lot of people think, well, um, I'm going to put my plane right here. But realize that this isn't the bottom of the room. It's actually way down here. So you take your scroller and come right down here, and that's where you put plane one. So I'm going to choose plane one and just put it right here at the bottom of the room. Maybe a little bit higher, because we're going to have a little uh, score panel there on the bottom. So I think that'll be fine. You probably want to center it. Mine's not quite centered, but. Now in this game, for all the sprites, uh, let's see if this is true. I think so. We want all the sprites to be centered. So make sure when you create the sprite, you click on the center button, because we want that crosshair to be right in the middle of the plane. The reason why this is important is when we shoot a bullet out towards the enemy planes. We want it to come from the center of the plane, not the left wing of the plane. So we're going to center the plane like that. And now our plane looks like it's in the center of the, the room. The next thing we're going to do is try to keep our, our plane in the room horizontally. Okay, So we don't want the plane to go off to the left or off to the right. So we're looking uh, to control the plane and try to keep it inside the room. So let's do that. We're going to create a, uh, a keyboard event. We're going to use the left key. So keyboard, left. And what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to see if we're already on the left side, then we don't want to go any further. If we look at our sprite, you'll note that our sprite is 65 a strange size. So 32 is going to be our center. That means we don't want to go left further than uh, 32 away from the side of the screen. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, we first have to check our X position. So we go to control, check variable. Which variable are we trying to check? Uh, the x coordinate. And we want to say uh, 32 is our uh, uh, width of half the plane. And we want to see if it's smaller than that. If it's smaller than 32, then we know that uh, we can't go any further. Uh, we're going to use the move to position rather than set speed. That's a little bit more precise. So jump to position, that's here. And we want to say negative 4 and relative. So that will move the plane uh, 4 pixels to the left. 
One thing we forgot to say here is that um, we only want to do this if it's not, we only want to move to the left if it's not smaller than 32. If it's larger than 32 or equal to 32, we'll allow them to move left, but nothing more than that. So here we say the word not, okay? So if it's not right next to the side of the screen, we're going to allow them to move left. If it, if they're, if it is right next to the side of the screen, then we want to stop, okay? All right, we'll say okay. Now for the right one, this is a little bit strange, so I would pay attention to this one. So keyboard, and we go right. Same thing, we want to test. We want to check a variable, so we're testing the variable. And this time, we want to say, um, the way you locate the, uh, the right side of the screen is you say this, you say room underscore height. You have to, sp you have to spell it correctly because this is a predefined variable in GameMaker. It, it has this variable already created and will tell you, well, we don't want room height actually, we want room width because we're doing the horizontal stuff. So it will give you a number back saying, okay, the room width is actually 640. Is that equals 32 or plus 32? That's a minus. So it says, we're trying to say if x is larger than, and again, we want to say not. If x is not larger than, that means if it's less than or equal to uh, room width minus 32, because 32 is the half of our plane, then we're going to allow it to move right. And again, all we're, all we're doing is a, a jump to position, but this time, uh, instead of negative four, we're going to say positive four relative. Okay, so let's try that and see if the uh, plane stays, stays in the room. I'm going to give this game a, uh, a meaningful name. I'll call this uh, Green Man Sam. Okay, you'll note that we have a little plane down here in this huge room. Can you see that? I'm going left and right. And you can see that our plane is staying in the room. Now, you, you wouldn't normally want to show the whole room, right? And we're going to fix that later. Right now, the plane is staying in the room. Nothing's happening though, other than you can move left and right. So if you did it right, it should look like that. Although it looks really strange. <laughs> now we would like it if instead of seeing the entire room, we just want to have like a portal into the room where we can see a certain section of the room, not the whole thing. So in Game Maker, there's this concept of a view. Your room can be bigger than what you might see on the screen. So we're going to set up the view uh, right now. So if we go to the room, it has a tab called Views, and that's what we want to do in this game. Uh, we're going to enable the use of Views, and we want to say Visible when Room Starts. We got both of those. And we need to describe what the first view is on the screen. Um, we have to do a little bit of math. Not much, but some. So what part of the room do we want to see? Well, we want to see uh, 4,800 here for the height. But we want to subtract off the height of the view. Well, our view is 480, so 4,800 minus 480. And we have that number, 432. Four hundred. What was it? Get four thousand. Four thousand three hundred twenty. Okay. So that's uh, the room height minus uh, the height of the view. Okay. The port on screen we don't want to change, and we'll stick with that for now. Okay. So let's save that and see if it looks a little bit better. Okay, I don't see our, our plane. 
So must, we must be moving or looking at the wrong part of the room. Yeah, so we want this number to be actually 4320 and this number to be 480. Okay. Hey, look, there's my plane. It's animating. Looks like it stops going that way. I'm getting some strange delays. Yeah, now it's working. Okay, so uh, if you have it right, you'll be able to see the plane. We're all in the bottom of the room. Okay. What? Yeah, it is. You can speed it up. You're the game designer, so. So now we need to do up and down, and this is where it starts to get kind of complicated. Okay, so now we want to add the up and down uh, keys to the to the plane. So let's do that. So now we want to make sure that we're not going off the top of the screen. We want to keep the plane in the room. And this gets a little bit complicated. We can't use room height. The view is actually changing. So we're looking for, this time, the Y coordinate. And the value we're trying to test against, well, we can't say zero because we're, we're down all the way in the bottom of the room, not up at the top of the room where zero is located. So y you have to do this. You have to say view underscore Y view. This is the Y coordinate of the view. Okay. And we want to see if, um, if we're close to the top of the room. So we're going to say um, view Y view. Let me get the directions here. Plus 32. Remember our uh, plane is, is 65. And it's centered. So we have to do this. If it's uh, larger than that, if it's larger than that, then we want it. We want to be able to move up the screen. Okay. So I didn't say not there. Hopefully we don't need that. But we'll say that. And if that's the case, then we'll allow them to move. So again, we go uh, jump to position. But in this time, instead of changing x, we're going to change y. Now up is actually negative because y is upside down. So we're going to say negative 4 here mm -hmm. on y and say relative. So I'll give this a try. And our hope is that we'll keep the plane inside the view. So here's our plane. Uh, we're staying in the room to the left side. Let's try to go, go off the top of the view and it doesn't let us, okay? Otherwise, we fly right outside the room unless we put that check in there or outside the view. It's still in the room, but outside the view. Now, here's where it gets really complicated. <laughs> um, we have a couple problems. Uh, first of all, our room or our view is going to be moving or advancing through the room as we go. And we don't want to leave the plane behind because we don't want the plane to come off the bottom of the view. Okay? So, so what we're going to do is create a controller object. And if you remember from other games, a controller object doesn't really have a, a picture associated with, but it's going to help us control what happens in the room. So let's create a controller object right now. And uh, again, it doesn't need a sprite. But what we're going to do is in the controller object step event, what, what we'd like to do is to um, change the view uh, by two pixels. So you'll be slow, slowly scrolling up the room as you start. And so we're going to set the Y position of the, the view uh, to uh, minus two. We're going to add that to the view. So that's a variable, I guess, here. Set variable. And we're going to say view underscore y view. So the y coordinate of the view. And we want to subtract two from it. Remember y is upside down, so we're to go up, we have to say negative two and say relative. So for every frame that goes by, the, the view in the room is going to advance two pixels. Okay. Let's see what that looks like here. It doesn't seem to be changing. So what did I forget to do? 
I forgot to uh, forgot to put the controller in the room. That's a common issue. So make sure somewhere in your room you have that controller. It doesn't matter where. It can be anywhere in the room. They're not going to see it anyway. But they will see the effects of it. See how my plane, there's my plane. I'm trying to keep up with the room. But if I don't press a button, notice how my plane now scrolls off the bottom of the screen. Can I get back on once I fall off? Yeah, I guess I can. Because I'm going up four and it's going back two. Okay, so we have to manage, well, how are we going to keep the plane in the room is the question without scrolling off the bottom. And the way you do that is you give the plane a starting speed, okay? And the starting speed is going to be, um, to keep it stationary, we need to go forward too all the time. So in our plane event or plane object, we're going to add a create event and we're going to set the speed we'll set the speed to 2 going up okay and it's not relative it just starts at a speed of 2 so the slowest the, the plane's ever going to be able to go is 2 okay yeah we're going to do down in a second okay so now we try it and again, this is just game mechanics, trying to get the game s started on the right foot here. So the plane's moving along. That's fine. It's got a speed of two uh, when it goes up. It will stay. Notice how it's now floating off the bottom of the room because it's keeping up with the view. Okay. Okay, so let's do down. And we again, we, want, we don't want it to go down unless... Uh, if it's going to be going off the bottom of the room. So let's add that key press. Okay, so we're doing a keyboard event. Uh, Where's that? Letters, no. We want to do down. We don't want to go down if it's uh, going off the bottom of the room. Zoom. Okay, so now we're trying to keep the plane in, in the view. But first we have to check where it's at. So let's do that here. Again, the coordinate or the variable we're trying to check for is y. The value is, well, <laughs> we have to make it relative to the, the y coordinate of the view. So this is where it gets kind of weird. Uh, we say view underscore y view we want to add the the view height which is 480 so view y view is the top left corner of the current view we want to do the bottom of the view so we have to add the views height which is 480 but we want to make it 32 from the bottom so we would say minus 32 so view y view plus 480 minus 32. And I would leave it like this rather than just doing all the math. Uh, and then we want to see if it's uh, smaller than that. If it's smaller than that, we'll allow them to move down. But if it's not smaller than that, then we won't allow them to move. Okay, so I think that's what we want. And then if that's the case, Yeah, we want to do jump to position. So let's do that. Let's move further down. We want to add to y. So we would say 4. Positive 4, not negative. Relative. Right? And now we'll, we'll take a look and see if we can keep this plane in the view. Remember that the view is scrolling two pixels per frame, but the plane is also flying at the same speed. If I go down now, once I get to the bottom, it's not going to let me go any further. Okay. So now we've figured out how to keep the plane in the view. Okay. It's not going to go outside. 
But we have a problem because uh, in this game there's a control panel or like a, yeah, I guess I call it control panel at the bottom of the screen that we're going to have to keep on the screen. And so we don't want the plane to fly into the control panel. So we, ha we have some things to do there. But at least now the basic mechanics are there. So next, let's create that panel for us. This is where we're going to put the damage and the score. So let's create that uh, panel now. And we'll load the sprite for that. There it is right there. Again, we don't need to remove the background of that. It's got a little uh, logo on it and some place where we, where we can write the score and the damage. Okay, so we have our panel. Looks pretty nice. Uh, nothing really has to go along with it. We don't have to center it or anything, so we'll go with that. And then we'll make a panel object as well. So there's our panel object. We'll use our panel sprite. And that looks good. And now we can actually put it in the room. So uh, we'll choose the panel object. And we want it to be right here at the bottom of the room. See how our panel scrolled off the room? So this is, this is what's kind of odd in this game. We're going to have to fly the panel at the same speed the plane's flying. So the panel's flying through the room as well. So how do we do that? Um, when the panel first gets created, just like the plane, we're going to give it an, an initial speed of 2, or negative 2 going up. Or Two going up, I guess you could say it that way. And now our panel will will continue on through the room. We'll save this and try that. Speed, I said two up. So I see now our panel is flying along with the room. It's not quite at the bottom of the room though. You can still see a sliver of the room there. So you'll have to play around with that. Our problem is our plane is, well, underneath the panel. So that's a problem. Okay. So there's a couple of things we have to change there. First of all, there's this concept of depth. Depth means how it, it controls uh, which objects get drawn first when they're overlapping each other. And the greater the depth, Th that'll be the first thing that gets drawn. The least amount of depth, that will be uh, what gets drawn, drawn last. So in this case, we want the plane to always be on top. So we're going to set the depth here of the plane to negative 99. So that means it's up in the air. Depth is kind of reverse logic. It's how deep in the ground you are. If you say negative 99, it's up above everything else. So that's where you want to set it. Uh, we also need to keep the plane uh, above the panel. Now, if we look at our panel sprite, uh, we see that its height is 76. And again, we don't want our plane to go down there. So we're going to have to do a little bit more math uh, in our plane object when we're going down to make sure Oh, we say 76. So this is the height of the panel. So again, this equation gets more complicated. In English, we want to do the top left corner of view, y view. We want to add the view's height, which is 480. We want to subtract off the offset so the bottom of the plane doesn't go into the panel. And we want to subtract off the height of the panel. So that's what all those numbers mean. So now we play the game. The panel should be flying along with the plane, and the plane is still staying in the view and not going over the panel. Let's see. At the bottom, yeah, it looks good. 
Floating up? Okay, we'll have to look at it once I'm done with this. Okay, so we've got the panel working. The plane is staying in the room. So that looks good. Now to help out with the, the illusion of moch motion that we're trying to present here, it's not really an illusion. We are actually scrolling through the room. Uh, it'd be nice if we throw some islands in every once in a while so it's not just blue water all the time. So we're going to add those sprites right now. Uh, we'll create the sprites for each island. Each island. I'll call the first one Island 1. And we're looking for our islands. Okay, so there's island ones. We don't want to remove the background. Well, yeah, maybe so. It looks kind of cheesy if you don't, so we'll do that. Uh, we'll create the next sprite. I'll just do these quickly. So it doesn't look pixelated. Mm. Yeah. You can try it. Now, if you look at the book, they have uh, they have all the stuff you have to do to islands. But now we don't have to really do anything with islands because they just sit there, really. And again, it's just to uh, it's just to provide some variation to the background. As before, we have to create an object for each one. So, And now we can scatter islands randomly through the room. Okay, so here's island one, and just, you can shut off the, the snap for now so you can see it a little bit better. Remember our room's really large, so it'd be nice if you didn't see the same island on the same view, so. I guess that's not right. So first start with one of them. Just kind of randomly locate them. The machine is locked up for some reason. Maybe one near the end of the room. So go through the room and, and then add each of the different types of islands. And try not to get the same island type on the screen to begin with. But it gives uh, a certain amount of realism and it helps uh, provide the, the motion that, that you need in the room. Okay, so the island's floating by. Notice I'm flying over the island since I set the depth properly. Oh, we see the islands are flying over the panel though. See that? So we need to change the depth of the islands. So the island, I guess the panel, we want to set the the, the panel's depth. Now we said the plane was negative 99. So let's set the panel to like negative uh, 98. The plane shouldn't s stray into the panel. But if it does, at least the plane will get drawn last. Okay. Let's just verify that the the islands are staying on screen. 
or staying off from the top of the panel. Now in the book it says you have to delete the islands and all of that, but these islands never leave the room. We just scroll past them. Yeah, now the islands are going underneath the panel is where we want. All right, next what we want to do is when the uh, user hits the, the enter key, that's when we want to fire. Or actually, let's use the space bar. Okay. We want the space far bar for plane one. So we're going to plane one. Uh, this is where when they hit the space bar, we want the bullet to, to be created. To do that, though, we're going to need a bullet sprite and, um, and a bullet object. So we're just going to call it bullet. What sprite are we going to use? Uh, in this game, there's lots of different bullets, but we're going to choose that one. And we do want to remove the background on that. Now these bullets, uh, we want them to be centered because we want to have them come out of the middle of the plane, maybe just in front of the nose of the plane. And these are bullets that the player plane shoots at the enemies. And this is how you get rid of the enemies, so you don't crash into them. Okay. So we'll do that. And then um, create the bullet object. Use the bullet sprite. That looks good. Now we want the plane to actually fire the bullet. So we put a space keyboard event. And I think the best way to do this would be a create moving. Yeah, let's just try this. Create moving. Uh, we want to create a bullet. For the X and Y coordinates, well, X, we want to be zero, because this is relative, right? Relative to the, the plane. But for Y, we wanted the bullet to kind of start out just in front of the nose cone. So we're going to say negative 16. And the hope is this, is this puts it just off the front of the plane. The speed they want, it, want us to use is uh, 8. But since the room is moving at a speed of 2 going up, we're going to have to take that into account. And instead of 8, we're going to go up by 6. And our direction is going to be straight up. Straight up is 90 degrees. Hope this is right. So let's give this a try. Okay. So now I, I hit go and I get this the spamming of all these bullets. Okay. Makes the game uh, real easy to play. But that's not the behavior we want. Okay, so I'm gonna do these relatively quickly. Um, First of all, we want to get rid of the bullet once it goes off the top of the room, or top of the view. We want this to be in the bullet. So again, we're adding a step event. And we test. The variable we're testing is y, the value view, underscore y view. And we're saying minus 32. So if that's the case, then we want to have the bullet destroy itself. OK, so now we have the right object. So when the bullet goes off the top of the view, instead of just going through the entire room and killing anything in its wake, uh, we want it to, to disappear right as, right as it goes off the top. So there's that. We also, to control control the rate of fire, we're going to use something called uh, can shoot. And remember, this is what we did in the um, Evil Clutches game. We did something similar to this. So this would be back on plane one. We're going to 
in the create event, we're going to make a variable called can shoot. And we're going to set this to 1. The way this will work is anytime can shoot is greater than 1 or greater than 0, it'll, it'll allow you to shoot another shot. Okay. So we set uh, can shoot to 1. Can shoot set to 1. And then we're going to add a step event to the plane and then each time there's a a frame we're going to add one to can shoot so we say can shoot and we're just going to say one but we're going to say relative this time that means every frame can shoot is going to be the value in can shoot is going to be incremented by one Now when you hit the space bar, we first have to check to see if we're able to shoot right now. And the way that works is if can't shoot is positive, then uh, we allow them to shoot. So here we say can't shoot again. And if the value is larger than zero, only then will we create another bullet. But when we, cr when we create the bullet, we also want to set reset can shoot to negative 15. So every 15 frames, which is about a half a second, uh, you'll be able to shoot another shot. We'll set can shoot to negative 15. Now remember, every frame can shoot is going to be added 1 to. So eventually it'll get back above 0, and then you'll be able to shoot again. This is not relative. This is an absolute number we say negative 15. And then we put in the closing block. So again, what we're trying to do is avoid the spamming of the, of the bullets. Okay, so now my bullets are a lot less frequent. Now, if, if you want to give them the ability to shoot a little bit faster, we could say, um, we could add a key release event for the space bar. So when the space bar comes up, we can, uh, we can set can shoot to five relative, and that will scooch it up just a little bit. If, you, if we really want to shoot more quickly, this will allow us to shoot a little bit more often if we spam the space bar over and over again. So let's see if that can make that go a little bit faster. Okay, so I can shoot a little bit faster if I tap on the space bar a little bit more. If I just hold it down, it doesn't go as often, but if I tap it, I can go a little bit faster. Okay. So you got a little bit of control there. It's not bad. And again, all those uh, bullets leaving the screen should wink out of existence. So I think that's enough for today. At least that sh that'll get you going on moving the plane and being able to shoot. Uh, next time, we're going to add some enemy planes so we have something to shoot at. Things like that.